So on the desk here, we have a Metabox laptop, and I got this in today as a trade-in on a system that I sold. And the value I placed on this when the guy wanted to get rid of it was 200 Aussie dollars. Now this has a GTX 1070 in it, and it's also got an i7 6700HQ. But the problem with it is that uh, when it's on battery, it works absolutely fine. But as soon as you plug in the AC adapter, it then starts to either reset or switch off. And so what I'm gonna try and do is replicate this problem right now and see what's actually going on in front of my own two eyes. Because basically when he came over and he showed me the problem, it was just starting up and I couldn't really get a proper glimpse of things. But basically the history of this laptop was is that he bought it initially for 900 Aussie dollars and then it worked fine for three months, but then when he was playing Call of Duty Warzone, it started to crash, and the crashes became more frequent to the point where he had no idea what was going on with this laptop. And of course, being the situation that we're pretty much all in and around the world at the moment, he just wants to play games. And basically when it comes to laptops, I still really have no idea what they're worth or how much they cost to fix, where I put the worst case scenario down as the motherboard, could be faulty or the GPU's faulty, and that would cost me a lot of money to fix. Hence why I traded in for $200 Aussie dollars, because that is the worst case scenario that I would be able to get my money back on, at least with that value. So anyhow, this thing, I'm looking at it already, and the drivers here are from 2017. So that's already one big problem I can see. Another problem here is that it's got 100 gigabytes of SSD storage just completely unallocated. So it looks like it's got a 500 gigabyte SSD in it, but I have no idea why there's just 100 gigabytes sitting around there. And we go here, Windows is activated, it's got all the specs there, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. Uh, everything's looking great except those two things. So what I'm going to do now, first and foremost, is just quite simply reinstall the OS and also take this thing apart, make sure the thermal paste is fine, everything's intact and the temperatures are fine. But before I do that, I also quickly plug in the AC adapter and run some stress tests just to see what the temperatures are like now and just to see if I can actually get it to switch off like the guy was saying. People like to laugh at me for this kind of stuff, but it's tech yes loving, it works baby. So now we've been stress testing this CPU for over 10 minutes and the temperatures are getting pretty hot, especially on core one, which could indicate that we do need to change over the thermal paste. But for what it's worth, laptops do usually run pretty hot anyhow. This thing is getting moderately loud. I have heard laptops get a lot louder, uh, though for what it's worth, it's showing here it's using up 38 watts. So it's pretty power efficient, uh, but the CPU is micro throttling there, we can see with this overheating detected. So basically it means that we gotta change the thermal paste, but I haven't seen it crash just yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change over to Unigine Heaven now and put it on low settings on low resolution to not only try and stress the graphics card, but also stress the CPU at the same time. So we just loaded up Unigine Heaven, and as soon as we did that, we were almost instantly met with a black screen, and now the system has restarted. So the problem is definitely to do with either the GPU itself, or it just can't get enough power. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna quickly install Afterburner on this system, and then uh, pretty much downclock the GPU on both the core clock, the power limit, and the memory, and then run this test again and see if it works. So going through some further tests with this laptop, it's clear to see that the GPU is having some sort of issues. And what we saw was not only did it drop out after the Heaven benchmark, 
but it also dropped out after we installed the latest drivers. And I tried loading up Afterburner and changing the core clock speeds and the system would just go one color even when I try to drop it down 15 megahertz. Then I tried dropping the memory speeds down individually just by itself and that sort of bugged out where it just went plus to some insane value and then I uh, tried changing it and just basically ended up setting it to default. So it doesn't like to communicate with MSI Afterburner that well and installing the latest drivers did not help. So we're gonna pull this thing apart right now and see if something's uh, wrong that's visibly wrong with the hardware. We're gonna try to give it some tech, yes, loving and then give it a reboot. So pulling the laptop apart, I can see that this thermal paste is really sloppy. We definitely need to clean up this GPU right here and then put some new thermal paste on. That could even be the problem in itself, where if this is even capacitive, this thermal paste, that could be causing the instant uh, cutout when the benchmark is loaded. I wouldn't say it would be the fans because we heard the fans ramping up before. And even if one of the fans was failed, it would take like a good 30 seconds for this to overheat and switch off where it's switching off instantly and it's even switching off when we try to change things like the core clock. So what we're gonna do now is of course clean this all up and then put it back together and see if that fixes it, but also just go over this laptop with a fine tooth comb and see if anything else stands out. So here we are now at the next day. We've given this some tech yes loving, temperatures are looking a little bit better, but the problem is it's still like after I've reinstalled everything, it still does cut out after that running that heaven benchmark. And I've also managed to find the uh, Clevo app where we've managed to downclock the GPU and also downclock the memory to as low as it can go. And this is the weird thing, like I'll show you right now. It, I can get it to actually work properly. And it's a weird fix where I go to the NVIDIA control panel and then I change to integrated graphics, the uh, Intel HD graphics, run the benchmark, close it down, then I change it back to auto select and then I run it and it then works after that. So it's looking to me like either something is damaged on this laptop, like a little chip that connects the GPU and the CPU, or it needs a new vBIOS where it's just not as efficient as it used to be. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna flash a GTX 1070 Max-Q BIOS onto this laptop and see what the results are like.
So now we have a Metabox laptop that we picked up for 200 Aussie dollars and it's working absolutely fine. Nothing is now faulty. It now runs Doom Eternal, runs F1 2019, and it ran those games for quite a while. And the temperatures are okay on the CPU and the GPU. But to get here, it was a string of events that I consider very lucky. And we'll talk about those string of events. The first being the NV Flash tool. Now I went onto Reddit and there was thankfully someone who had left up an older version of NV Flash. And it was only one of these versions that enabled me to uh, force flash a different BIOS onto this laptop's GTX 1070. And that was the 5.14. So big thanks to Viper and also the guy on Reddit that uploaded this and made this NV flash version to begin with. So after that, we then went on to tech power up and bless the tech power up uh, for having this VBIOS database because someone uploaded an unverified Clevo GTX 1070 BIOS with the same file size as this Metabox right here. And basically the Metabox is a, I guess a rebrand of a Clevo laptop, which I think Clevo are a big uh, laptop manufacturer in Taiwan. So we then got that GTX 1070 BIOS, we downloaded it. I then uh, tried force flashing it numerous times and it was right at the last time I was like, look, I'll just try this on this different version of NV flash. And sure enough, it then force flashed and we restarted and it ended up working. And the funniest thing is we just had nothing to lose. So I tried everything I could to get it working. And of course, trial and error in today's video ended up prevailing with the big W. Though what if this laptop didn't work after that VBIOS flash? Well, this comes down to me just then putting it up as an office PC and turning it on integrated graphics and disabling the GTX 1070 because I would have still got my money back as a just a 15.6 IPS laptop DDR4 i7-6700HQ. That would have easily been worth what I traded it in for. So that was sort of like my retainer. I really had nothing to lose except my time when I tried uh, taking the gamble on this laptop, but it paid off big time with those three steps. But you're probably wondering now, this TDR video failure blue screen, what's going on there? Because I read up uh, on forums that people were having these problems, not with just with Metabox laptops, but other laptops out there. So you're probably wondering, what is the exact issue? Now I can only really hazard a guess as to what exactly is going on with this laptop. And that comes down to this feature in the BIOS I feel. It's called GPU performance scaling. Now what this does is if your CPU is not using 100% and the GPU is using 100%, it can then essentially borrow that TDP budget that's not being used or that watts that isn't being used by the CPU and then transfer it over to the GPU, essentially overvolting the graphics card to get more performance while your CPU is not using up much performance. And what happens in this process is I feel is that there's a chip for that, that enables that to happen. And on this particular laptop, I feel like that chip has become faulty and it's just cutting out. So by me flashing it to a different GTX 1070 Clevo BIOS that maybe doesn't support this technology, I was then able to get the GTX 1070 working absolutely fine again. So if you do see this error on a laptop in the future, then you may wish to consider flashing the VBIOS, but the problem is you've got to then rely on luck to see if someone's uploaded a different VBIOS for your GTX 1070 on your laptop or whatever graphics card for your laptop is onto the Tech Power Up website. So I was really fortunate and really lucky that someone did that and it ended up working because basically it said the PCIe subsystem ID was different to the GTX 1070 I had on board here. And so basically that ended up fixing this laptop where the performance was impressive, the noise wasn't that loud at all, and the keyboard and everything else checks out. The build quality is actually quite good on this box right here to begin with. Now the GTX 1070, that's actually got more CUDA cores than the desktop variant, it's just clocked lower. And then of course there's the Max-Q variant, which is uh, even clocked lower than this GTX 1070 in this laptop here. So I will give kudos to this particular 1070. It's not a bad version or bad variant. It actually can get up and go, especially at 1080p. Even in something like Doom Eternal on ultra settings, we're getting some really good FPS numbers. So I'm really impressed at what this thing can do. But one thing I will point out is there's only a single DDR4 16 gigabyte stick in there. I'd like it to be 
uh, two sticks to get that dual channel. So perhaps I'll upgrade this laptop and make it 32 gigabytes of DDR4. Who knows, but for what it's worth, we've now got this thing up and running. It is working absolutely fine. And I've got to say, this is probably one of the best scores I've gotten in the history of the channel where this thing here is traded in for 200 Aussie dollars. We just gave it some tech, yes, loving, applied some new thermal paste. And here it is at Tech Yes City going through the steps, the trial and error with that motto. That is, if you've got nothing to lose, you've got nothing to lose. So do let us know in the comments section below what you think of this deal right here. I believe personally, I think this thing would be worth in its current state in Australia, in the current situation going on right now, around about 1100 Aussie dollars. That's what I feel something like this would go for. So that's a big win on my part, getting this thing to work again to 100%. Though of course, love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And speaking of thoughts and opinions, we got the question of the day from 60 Shaddy. And they asked, do these apply to AMD based components as well? And they're referring to yesterday's video, I'll put the link up here where we talked about one of the uh, tune ups you can do using the inspector program on Intel CPUs. Now, I've tried inspector on AMD CPUs, both old and both Ryzen in the past and it doesn't give any performance boosts. In fact, it can be a slight like one to 2% detriment to performance if you do disable the Spectre and Meltdown updates on these CPUs. Well, I think it's actually, you can only disable one of them because Ryzen at least is immune to the other uh, vulnerability. So if you're on an AMD CPU, you don't have to worry about using Inspector. It's not gonna really make any difference whatsoever. And with that aside, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button for us. And also if you stayed this far and you're not yet subscribed and you wanna see more of that potato juggling, madman flipping yes man, then you know what to do. Hit that sub button, ring the bell to get the content as soon as it drops around here at Tech Yes City. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. Yeah.